the silver, advanced leader bronze, Dinesh Jayavalan. Thank you so much, Toastmaster of the Evening, Advanced Communicator Silver, Advanced Leader Bronze, Ruben. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a very exciting session. Like if you attend a Toastmasters meeting, right, you'll hear this line a lot. Whenever there's a table topic session, the master will be like, ladies and gentlemen, this is, a, this is an exciting session. And then when we start the prepared speech, they'll be like, ladies and gentlemen, this is an exciting session. And when we start the evaluation, evaluation session, it's the same. This is an exciting session. In Toastmasters, it's all about excitement, apparently. <laughs> so, evaluation, before I call the evaluators, I would just like to make this disclaimer note that I always do. Bear in mind that whatever evaluation that you're going to hear only portrays what that one evaluator thinks about you. It does not give you a full evaluation about how others would have felt. So if you think that you do not agree with what the evaluator is saying, it's all right, don't hate the person. It's perfectly fine to disagree with the evaluator. You have your mentors and you have everyone else to also consult in getting to know what you actually did wrong. So to kickstart the evaluation session, we have five evaluators or who are all evaluating a project speech. I'd like to kickstart it with to evaluate Tan Chi Yong. Can I please have competent communicator Wun Yan Yi? Your speech titled The Change You Need. First, I will evaluate on his structure and his organization and then touch on a few improvements that I feel that could have made his speech more valuable. I liked that he chose a good topic, books, which is easily relatable, and a necessity that most people in our society have neglected. I like that your topic was mysterious, it wasn't too obvious. Then I was thinking, what kind of change do I need? And then you talked about books. I liked that you were confident, he spoke with conviction, and he was obviously passionate about what he was going to talk about. Some points of improvement on structure and organization. I felt that your opening could be shortened to build and make way for your conclusion. I felt that you have spent most of your time building on how your sad story was and how you failed in your A level and in your A levels and you were lost in your transition before going into your main point of how books actually change your life. Perhaps you would like to shorten it and tell us that you were at a loss at A levels and straight go into books, skipping in your studies transition. Also, your conclusion could have left at an ounce of hunger. That way, just when the bell rang. It would have been just in time. Because your opening was too long, that's why you didn't have time to build and really elaborate on your conclusion. On your body points, I felt that there were too many books. There were five of them. May I suggest that you pick three main books that really helped change your life and shape who you are, the 19-year-old today. Perhaps the book on leadership, the book on economics, and the books on change. Those are the main points that I feel will be appropriate for you to elaborate on your body points and then further support in your conclusion why books are so important. Also, for advanced improvements, overall I feel that he has done very well in his CC2 speech objectively, so there are some points of improvements for advanced and future speeches. If you don't mind, it is my two cents. For example, your eye contact. Do you pay attention on the audience on your left? Or on your right. I know that you're passionate and you really want to get your message across, but really I felt that you have only focused towards the center. So do remember to pay attention to left and right because I felt very cold there. Yes. Pace. I felt that because you had so much to say, your pace was too fast. So I suggest to cut points so you can speak slower. Second, pause more. For example, each day I read, each day learn. You said, each day I read, each day I learn. For example, you could use Joshua's speech example. He has very good pacing and pausing. He said, with full conviction, I signed up and paid faithfully. That way your pause 
will allow people to sink into your speech and get the feel of it. Lastly, vocal variety. I like that you are consistent and passionate in your voice, but too consistently passionate is not good. People will start to tune off and it will neglect your vocal variety and the flexibility. For example, I felt that it had no difference because of your consistent passion in your voice. After I complete A-levels, I was at my lowest. And do you wish to be a better person as well? I felt there was no impact. These are my two cents. Back to you. All right, thank you, Yenny. One thing that you can all observe from her evaluation is she's very analytical in the sense that she dissects the content of the speaker rather than focusing too much on vague things like delivery. So that's one thing that we can all take from Yenny's evaluation. So to call the next evaluator who will be evaluating Joshua Chan, can I please have competent communicator, Guan Leader Brown, Belinda. Joshua. I like how you came up to the front over here in a very relaxed manner and you speak about your story, personal story. And you have used props such as the paper and the card, one card. If I may give you these three points, CPR, to breathe new life, to give life to your story even better. The C is your content. You have given us all from the opening, body and conclusion. But there's one thing. I felt it's missing. It's your point of the story. Because you have so much content on your betrayal, and then you have content on your forgiveness. You were so focused on your betrayal that I felt your forgiveness, which is the point of your story, correct? Is lacking. And based on your forgiveness that you mentioned, you could have also evoked emotion, give us vivid imagery, describe your feelings, how you struggle to forgive this person, your struggles, describe to us. And P stands for your presentation. I felt that you lack a vocal variety and you could have done more on it because you are a good speaker. These are the vocal variety that I felt you could have improved, which is the dialogue between the, your doctor and yourself. There was a dialogue going on, but I couldn't differentiate who is the doctor, where, where the doctor stands, and where do you stand, and your brother and yourself when you have that dialogue too. And you say, I will never ever trust people. I felt that it was quite monotonous over there. You could have improvised by saying, I will never ever trust people. You could have shown your anger even more. And when you mentioned that your trust over people is like tearing the paper. You were tearing the paper very gently. I ask you, if an, angry, if, an, if an angry person were to tear a paper, how would the person tear a paper? It would be like that. It's just like this. All right? You could dramatize more to evoke the emotion in us. And R stands for remove. I noticed that you were shuffling and especially your left leg you have like that, you're shuffling. So if you can stand at one position, if you want to move, move with purpose. Alright? And 
you are also holding your value. I would, I'm not sure why, but yeah, if you were not, but you did it. Alright, thank you Belinda. So one thing that we can all observe, yeah, thank you so much Ben for that. <laughs> the problem whenever you, you want to be dramatic and then you make a mess and then you just it. So thank you SAA for that. So one thing that we can all learn from Belinda's evaluation is obviously how to tie a paper when you're angry. But in addition to that, is how she used acronym in her evaluation, which was CPR. So that gave everyone a clear idea of what she was trying to say. So that's a point that you can take as well if you're planning to evaluate someone. So to call the next evaluator, we'll be evaluating Ronnie. Can I please have Advanced Communicator Bronze, Competent Leader Ivan. Competent Communicator Ronnie, thanks for the free concert. <laughs> I like Leslie Chiang and I love his song. Similarly, I like your speech and I'd love to give you two cents for improvement as well. But firstly, let me start with what I like about your speech. So I particularly like it when, how you structure your speech because it was very organized and then you make your purpose very clear. In the beginning, you started with the open, good opening and then you share the three points clearly about the experience, the statistic and also the preventions about the mental health and also the purpose, the, what you would like them to, uh, to, to make the change in the end. So the whole purpose and organization of your speech was very clear. Secondly, I also like the preparations that you have demonstrated to us that you made full use of the TME to set the seat. Let us know the audience, let the audience know where they are, who they are, in the, what kind of scenario it is. Also with all the props that you have you, you, you were using during your speech delivery, I think all have shown us that you have very good preparations. Congratulations for that. Good job. So here come for the area of improvements. The key one of the key objective of your speech is to differentiate a keynote address with a normal speech. And one of the main difference between keynote address and the normal speech to me, I think is the convictions and the authority that demonstrated by the speech, but by the speaker themselves. And the way in order to demonstrate convictions and authority is vocal variety. So one of the ways to, sh to show authority is to have a deeper voice when you are de delivering your speech. Personally, when from my observations, you are using your normal tones when you're delivering your speech. Perhaps you actually should control your voice in order to deliver it in a more <coughs> in a deeper tone. Then you will actually show the authorities. So, and secondly, when it comes to the conviction itself, I also noticed that you tend to end most of your phrases or sentences with a high tone. For example, when you are introducing yourself or it's, uh, in normal conversation, will you actually introduce yourself like, hey, I'm a Ronnie, Ronnie Lim, rather than, hi, nice to meet you, I'm Ronnie Lim. Wish you end your sentence with a lower tone instead of higher tone. Because when we end our sentence with higher tones, it, it giving the feeling like we are unsure about the information we are sharing. Like, you're not sure your name is Ronnie Lim. So that's one of the tips. Secondly, it's about consistency and also let them see about of your speech delivery. So even though you already set the scene that we are in the conference, but there was occasions that you link it back to CC Band. Mention about we are in the Toastmaster, etc. So this actually brings us out from the scene that you have set for us. So that's the inconsistency that I have observed. While you miss out certain point during your delivery, I think that is it's not suggested for you to mention that okay, I have missed out certain point and then go back again. I think we wouldn't know that it has been missed if we didn't mention it. So all in all, I think go into the two area improvements that I have pointed out and then of course stay strong with the strength that you have already demonstrated, then I think you will deliver uh, definitely a better keynote address in the next bit attempt. Back to you. Thank you.
so much advanced communicator Ron to meet and meet Ivan. So from his evaluation, what that we, uh, something that we can all take is how he related his evaluation to the speech objectives. So even he gave his own evaluation, but he was able to relate it back to the speech objectives, which is something that we sometimes forget, because every speech has their own objectives. So good job on that. So to evaluate the next speaker, can I please have distinguished Toastmaster Murphy to evaluate Sakia? Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you, Seki, for a wonderful speech. I could feel your sincerity. I could feel your dignity and your grace. The conviction that you have expressed has been really felt, at least by me, as I was sitting there. I felt that you expressed your dignity by sharing with us the, the, the challenges that you've gone through with your exco, being a new exco with little experience, and how you have actually gone through the difficulties in, in ensuring that you have taken the odds and emerged as a victor. You have also shared with us how graceful as you are accepting the award and how it meant to you and also to the organization. That was fantastic. I could really feel that as I was sitting there. You were sincere but I thought, as a one way forward, you could even be more sincere. Firstly, what I would prefer is if you could accept your award and put it down. So as you can see, I'm actually using both of my hands to show my sincerity to you as I'm accepting the award from you. Secondly, you have given recognition to your exco collectively. I believe the challenges, the difficulties, and the barriers that you and your excos have gone through, they would deserve an individual recognition. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity to specifically thank my VPE Sam, who has really worked his guts out despite being in hospital. <laughs> <laughs> he was making calls even though the, the patient next to him was complaining at 12 o'clock. Why are you still making calls? <laughs> Sam, thank you very much. <laughs> Ivan, who has been a very dedicated VPM, he took leave to make sure that he is able to organize a members event that all of us enjoy so much. I believe how he actually made us run 10 kilometers without breakfast. <laughs> For that, thank you very much. Okay. And one final thing that I would like all of us to understand how this award means to us is without fake Toastmasters, we're not going to be here. We didn't work for you or me, we work for the organization. It is because of the organization we're all here, we stood together, and we were convicted to make sure that we have that. Ladies and gentlemen, for that, I'd like to thank all of us and just move on. Seki, I believe you will become a great president in future, and I believe your people will be able to hear from you the direct recognition in due course. Back to you. from his evaluation is he was very, I wouldn't say analytical, but he sort of recited back what Seki did. So once he does that, even if we have forgotten what Seki spoke about, we can sort of have a flashback of that's what he did. So as an evaluator, what he did was, rather than just saying I like when Seki did that, he actually elaborated what that was. So that's also a technique that you can use if you want to elaborate on the strengths that you saw in that speaker. So to now evaluate our final speaker, who was standing beyond. Can I please have distinguished Toastmaster Samuel?
Can I have the honor to invite you in front? <laughs> <laughs> Rose number two. <laughs> Mono drama or real life drama? What is? <laughs> real life. A good introduction. Bravo. Your speech, you had a good opening, story, a good drama, as well as some emotions. Right? You acted very well. Your voice, we are able to hear it and we can see your frustration, your regret, your anger, and your disappointment out of the whole picture. Good command of English. You try your very best to follow the manual by trying to avoid as much as eye contact as possible. All right? <laughs> Vocal variety, as I mentioned earlier, you had all the <coughs> tones, the pitch, the, the, uh, the impact, bang, everything was there. Body language, you acted very well, like a good actor, right? You are able to show your frustration with your movement, bang the white board, took out your jacket and put it at the right place. The character that you played, I'm not sure whether is it a responsible husband or a, conf a confession of a playboy. <laughs> you spoke with full of conviction. You arranged your story and you showed a lot of emotion in that particular words that you say now. You made your speech a real life drama. The important part is when you playing this kind of monodrama, you had all the requirement. But one thing I've noticed is the other girl, you are not able to bring her to life. That's where we are waiting for the excitement. You should say she had a body like hourglass. <laughs> Lips like dread chili. <laughs> that made me melt like an ice cream. <laughs> Back to you. Samuel for the very dramatic evaluation <laughs> for the monodramatic speech.